I'm Andrew Whiteside. This is an Entertainment New Zealand special. Tonight I'm talking to Cliff Curtis. You'll recognise him instantly. He's one of our finest New Zealand actors. He's also made it big in Hollywood. Cliff Curtis is a Māori actor famous the world over for his appearance in dozens of films including Whale Rider and Once Were Warriors. His most recent role was that of Genesis Portini in the film The Dark Horse, the story of a man with a history of mental illness who takes on the role of a chess coach for a bunch of impoverished youth. Curtis sat down with me recently to discuss this movie. Well, Cliff Curtis, uh, welcome. It's great to meet you. Oh, no, thank you. Yes, good to meet you too. And congratulations on uh, The Dark Horse. Your performance was absolutely brilliant. What was it like for you? Oh, it was a blessing. It was beautiful. Yeah, um, very whānau oriented experience because I never got to meet Genesis Portini myself. So I learned about him through his wife and his son and his chosen family, you know, um, Noble Keelan, the Jedi. Um, you know, his brothers that helped sort of form the, uh, the chess club. My experience was sort of that far now embracing me and then supporting me in, in that role, yeah. To play the role of Genesis Portini, Curtis had to gain a great deal of weight. It was something he wasn't comfortable with. I wasn't really interested in putting on that amount of weight, you know. It's really unhealthy and I want to do it. Um, and so the only way that I got to an agreement with James, the writer-director, was that I didn't know how I would approach the role and I didn't know how that I would achieve the role or how we would do it and that if he could sort of like come to terms with that idea and that I might not put on that weight. I might sort of play him as a strung out weedy guy and drop loose weight. I wanted the freedom to create my own interpretation of the role and not adhere to the reality of what Genesis. I, you know, if I, if I creatively, I felt like there was another, I, I wanted that freedom. But then after I saw the documentary and after I met the Fano and after I started playing chess and sort of this, particularly the type of chess that he played and how he played chess, which was usually with a, with a bear in one hand and, you know, and the speed clock uh, near the chessboard to the, to the other. So once that happened, it just sort of, it was an organic process. Mm. It was fun, it was challenging though, putting on that weight. It made me really nauseous, really yeah. sick, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, and then after you get over the nauseousness and the, sort of the, the sick feeling, then it actually you sort of get into this very comfortable sort of happy Buddha type sort of stage <laughs> where it's like all your clothes, you know, it's about sort of being comfortable. So all your clothes are comfy and you know, it's all about having a good time and having a few beers with your mates and playing chess, so yeah. So it's been an important role for you? Uh, yeah, I think this movie is kind of as a defining, you know, um, defining moment in my career, really. So, you know, I always sort of saw myself as an ugly duckling. I've always felt that I was going to develop later in life in terms of artistically and sort of just as a man. You know, I sort of, I kind of was aware at a young age that I was kind of messed up. And it's going to take time for me to sort of figure things out. And so I think, um, yeah, I think... Uh, the Dark Horse is really, or well, Genesis, is really that defining moment. That's that movie. Another defining moment for Cliff Curtis was his earlier role as the bad guy bully in Once Were Warriors. It was a character he didn't want to play. Once Were Warriors is a tough one for me. You know, it's a tough one for me because it's such a, you know, I was kind of, um, intellectually, I was not keen on the film being made even, and I read the book. And the book is set in the town where I'm from. So I was like, oh, no, I don't want these icons to be immortalized cinematically um, for all time. And that's exactly what happened. You never would have known that at the time, you would have thought. But I'd seen that the amount of furore that the, um, you know, the amount of kind of attention that the novel brought about, that it was quite possible the movie would do the same thing. But I don't think anyone guessed it would go to the extent that it did. I mean, we just had the 20th year anniversary and, you know, generation after generation are sort of like watching that movie and still defining themselves that way. And that's the, the difficulty of that movie for me, is that Māori then embrace that movie and then define themselves that way. And that's, that's tough. That's tough for me. Because I come from that background. There's nothing about that movie that's just untrue or inauthentic. It's absolutely true and it's completely authentic. Um, but it's not the experience of all Māori, and it's, uh, 
But I do think it's sort of true of all societies that there are these pockets in our society. But what I find difficult about the movie is that Māori and non-Māori identify that as Māori. Except for doing some publicity, Curtis has stayed away from most of the Hollywood hoopla. I always sort of felt that celebrity is, is, could be um, short-lived because it's all about perception. It's not based on reality. And then, but if you do a good job, if you fulfil your function and your role within the context of your work, then that's got, that's got legs, that's got sustainability written all over it. So that was, that was, the, that was the path that I chose, yeah. Because as a character actor, I sort of feel character actors can work, you know, well into their senior years, whereas movie stars, they can kind of come and go, you know, they can run hot for a minute, and then once they're cooked, they can be like, you know, very few sort of make it through that fire without getting burned. Your next role is in the movie Clavius. What, what can you tell me about it? I don't think I'm allowed to talk about it too much right now, but I can say he's a very spiritual person and it was life-changing for me. It's had, a, it's had a real impact on me, I think, um, in terms of defining myself spiritually and sort of digging down into that. So it's really been a life-changing experience. It's been an amazing blessing in my life, which you never, I, you know, it was kind of like always a joke um, about, I always wanted to play this role. It was kind of like a joke when people say, what do you want to play? I'd say, I want to play this role. So I don't know whether we can get clearance on even saying the role. Well, I know what that role is, but I'm not going to tell anybody. Um, if they need to know, they're just going to have to Google it. Uh, in the meantime, Cliff Curtis, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.